And there we go. And there we go. You start. You start. You do it first. You go first, Rod. You start this off, friendo. No, go ahead. It's cool. You could start. It's episode 83. You say your name, and then you say my name. We go back and forth. Let's go. It's up. Put on Playpants. Episode 83. Welcome to the Playpants podcast. He's Jason Ginty. My name is Rod Ryan, and this episode drops on 420. So a couple of crazy pot smokers that were not... Uh, we're going to try to play into the 420 thing, and we're going to put together top five uh, favorite stoner 420 weed marijuana songs, blazing up songs. Um, yeah, I mean, 420 is a, it's a it's always been a thing, but now it's becoming more and more a big deal. I think as more and more states are legalizing weed. Are you guys legal over there yet? We're not legal, but uh, you could. What I always tell people is, don't blow a bunch of freaking pot smoke in a cop's face. You'll be fine. You know, I'm in the quarter all the time, and what you, you what you smell is weed everywhere. But you think about the French quarters, nothing but bars and restaurants. Your yep. service industry is out there in the alleyway, smoking away on their breaks, and uh, the whole quarter's just got a cloud over it. So yeah, no one, no one really gives a shit. I smell it nonstop walking around the French quarter when I'm in town. Yeah. Not stop. Uh, Houston's so big. I don't know. I mean, I smell it at shows. We got BuzzFest coming up next uh, month. And so the it's an outdoor shed. So you've got seats that are like underneath a pavilion. And then you've got the lawn. It's just nothing but weed up there on the lawn. It, I mean, it's just weed everywhere. I mean, it's not even like every now and then you hit a pocket. Right. It's the whole thing. It'll be interesting to see because there's been, there's always been a ton of weed out at jazz fest. Uh, jazz fest is coming up in two weeks, two weekends in new Orleans. So it's always been, there's always been a lot of weed out there, but I don't know. I just feel like no one is afraid to kind of smoke it out in the open now in places that it has not been legalized yet. I remember years ago at jazz fest, someone always, Hey man, I got some weed. And then, you know, as things start, everyone's got about 90 beers in them on a hot day. And it's that last band before seven o'clock and it closed. Everyone's kind of like looking around and like, here, man, you want to hit? And it's like, everyone's being all like secretive. And now it's like, dudes are just standing out there with a freaking joint hanging out of their lip and stuff. It, it, it leads me to this question. Do our companies even testing for weed anymore? Like, I know they probably got it in a policy somewhere, but is anyone really pulling that trigger? Um, Yeah. I think they are testing for it in places. Really? Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. Because I know that our good friend, uh, Steven, uh, who lives there, he would love to smoke pot <laughs> and his company does test for it. So yeah, I, I think they do in places where it is illegal. And, you know, to be honest with you, I think that even when it's legal, I think they can test you for it. I, I, I don't know how many of it, any of it works, but they absolutely do test for weed. The thing that I that I noticed that I am noticing about weed is it's almost now silly. Maybe not silly, but okay. Let's just use Snoop Dogg who is like number two weed guy, right? Willie Nelson's number one and Snoop yeah. is number two. Yeah. yeah. Then we could have done a top five weed smokers. Like, you know, I mean, Seth Rogen would be in there, but, yeah. but is Willie one and Snoop two is, would everybody agree to that? I, you know, I could go back and forth depending on who you're talking to, but it's, yeah, I mean, they're such advocates or they're like doing it all the time. So yeah, I'd say that's fine. So let's just take Snoop Dogg for instance. And, you know, if you follow him on social media and stuff, you know, it used to be, it used to be kind of gangster smoking weed in your video. And it's like, Oh my God, there's, you know, Snoop and weed and blah, blah, blah. Now it looks it's not gangster because where he's doing it, it's, it's legal. <laughs> and now it looks like you're doing it because you have to do it. Right. And I know he's got a brand and I'm sure he's got his own line and you know, it's important for him to be seen smoking at all times. But again, now it, it doesn't, you know how smoking used to look cool. If you look up some old Carson late night things and you see the rat pack on there and they're smoking Ash and everybody's thought, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And everybody thought they looked cool. And then all of a sudden it just became not cool to smoke and nobody really smoked. It doesn't look that cool to smoke weed anymore. It, Snoop doesn't look cool no. because, because it's, it's so mainstream that 
he doesn't look silly. It's, he's very on brand for doing it, but it's just, it's not dangerous. It's not OG. It's not gangster to be smoking weed. It's completely legal. You're doing something legal and you're trying to look cool doing it. Am I getting my point across at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Cause like in 20 years, when like somebody goes and discovers a bunch of Snoop Dogg videos on YouTube, they're gonna be like, that oh, dude smokes a lot. And it's not gonna have the same impact as it does, you know, five years ago before right. that all, you know, no one's gonna give a shit. It's like smoking now. You're like, I actually look at people who smoke now and I'm like, what are you fucking doing? Like, do you not read? Do you not know yeah. about smoking? Like, it's weird to see someone smoke a cigarette nowadays. Even when I'm out in the quarter, it's, it's pretty rare. You know, you'll see people here and there, but it's, you know, it used to be you had that smoker's lounge at the workplace and everybody in there smoking. It would just be this fucking blue room from all the smoke. And then everyone got kicked outside. Remember that you always had those like weird fire escapes or those weird places yes. out the back. And there'd just be like 10 people from the office smoking away out there. And, and now you just don't see too many, at least where I go, I don't see a lot of people smoking. So the weed thing, I, I used to look at it like, oh my God, that's illegal. Right. You know, and you know, I remember going and buying weed at people's house and being fucking freaked out the two times I ever bought weed with somebody and I was losing my shit. I'm like, now you're like, wow, what a pussy. <laughs> right. You know, it, it doesn't matter. I don't know. It just, it, it, it's almost, these guys are becoming caricatures of themselves smoking their weed. It's just not gangster. It's just not gangster. It's just, you're doing something that's allowed where you're doing it. it you can you can open up a store. You might as well be eating ice cream in your video. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> but it was cool before when it, it was it was kind of outlaw. You know, it was cool. It was outlaw. It was dangerous. And now you're out there and you're still smoking your weed. And it's just, eh, dude. You know what? Maybe put out a video and then you don't where you don't smoke weed. That might even you know that might look more dangerous. That might but, look more OG. But think about it, man. It, it it was obviously we found out that weed is really not that big a deal. It's actually beneficial to medically speaking and stuff for a lot of people. And there's a lot of benefits to it. And here sure. we were all like, oh no, we're smoking weed. We're badasses. We're crazy. And it's like, it's because it was deemed bad yeah. for you. We all thought it was bad for us. You know, as soon as you're told you can't do something, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to do it. So, so that's why weed is funny. We've talked on this program before, and and I use the term, and and you kind of even said, oh, okay, well, I might be too. I said I was weed curious, you know? Yeah. Um, what I'm not curious about and what I realized immediately is the I, I don't like to smoke. I, I It's awful. And mm -hmm. weed now, you if you talk to, like, weed smokers, the stuff that's out there now is a million times more potent and it's just, you know, it cuts, it hits you harder, everything about it, it's different, you know? And I know all different strains are, are completely different, but, you know, dudes back in, in the days used to sit around and smoke weed like cigarettes. You could not do that with the stuff that people have now. It's, it's so, I, I don't, it's just so organized and there, it's just so the strains and everything that they got going on. Um, Hits my throat, hits my lungs, boom, smoking, boom. I am absolutely out. So you know what? Maybe Snoop Dogg is a fucking gangster still because he's blowing those big fucking plumes of smoke out. I can't, I can't do it. I tried. I tried. I cannot do it. It's so hot and just heats up my throat and it's horrible tasting and everything about it. So if I do get into the space it would have to be edibles or something like that. But smoking, I, I'm leaving it to Snoop and Willie. Yeah, I went to Amsterdam a few years ago and tried weed for the first time, really, and really smoked it and sat in the fucking coffee shops. And you're sitting on these couches and shit. And everyone's sitting around smoking. And I'm smoking. It was the same thing. I hated it. I fucking hated the, the burning because I don't smoke. And then sitting there and I'm just smelling everybody else's smoke. And I'm like, this fucking blows. Let's go get some beers, man. <laughs> I, I just, it's not for me. Now the edible thing, since I don't drink anymore, I don't do anything anymore. And have fun. I keep going, like you said, weed curious or edible curious. But my thing now is like, and I don't know enough about drugs anymore. I don't pay attention because I don't give a shit. But like, you always hear this stuff about, oh, this was laced with this and this dude died. And now I'm freaked out about it. So I'm like, I, I don't trust anybody anymore. 
So I kind of don't want to try it. Although sitting around on a Saturday afternoon and someone says, here, you want some fucking gummies? I bet I would have to really kind of go, I, oh, I don't know, man. It would, it would take a minute for me to, like at Jazz Fest, think about that. We're hanging out there. Oh, this is great, man. Fucking Grateful Dead are on stage or whoever the fuck's playing, you know? And, and someone hands us some gummies. We're going to look at each other and go, fuck it. Let's do it. You can't I mean, not with all those people. Here's why. And I'll tell you why. You absolutely cannot. You, you, you said earlier, sitting back by your pool, boom, it's a controlled area. Yeah. What happens, and this is just, this is my experience. You take something like that and then boom, paranoia. Now, not everybody in the world knows who Rod Ryan is. Most people don't. But what happens is you take something like that and you're in a you're in a big public space and you feel like everyone's looking at you. Oh, my God. They know. They know. They know. It, that's that's been my experience. And I can't do that. So it would have to be. And I would just say this. I would recommend this because not everybody's going to react to the same, but. Not at a jazz fest setting, not with all those people around, you know, it right. would definitely have to be in your backyard. Boom. And you got to see, Hey, what does it do to me? Yeah, no. And, and then I would be, I would still be curious and I would still have to think about it for a while. You know, what's really funny is all my years in radio and all this shit I've done over the years, people have always thought I was stoned all the time. I've heard that from people. I'm like, Oh man, I, I'm like, yeah, I don't smoke weed. I don't do any of that shit. And they're like, you don't? They're shocked when I tell them I don't smoke weed. I'm like, do I look like I smoke weed? What's going on here, man? You got a little shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Look. Yes, yeah, man. But it's like, wait, what? So, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, man. It's like, I keep going around and around in my head. I'm like, I don't drink anymore. And I really don't want to drink anymore. So it's like, okay, it's been a couple of years now. And it's like, I could find something else. You know, I'm not going to go out and start doing fucking lines of blow. But, you know, gummy here and there. Not good for you, but yeah, there, there's so much stuff available. I'm sure you have CBD stores on every corner like we do here and yeah. stuff that's available. It, there's stuff that they will sell over the counter that will get you high. Yeah. How is it legal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I was never a guy that wanted to sit around in a tie dye shirt and hacky sack and talk about dumb shit for seven hours either. <sighs> Not to stereotype too much, but how do you, but okay. How do you sleep in all honesty at the end of the day? Boom. You lay down. Do you sleep? Do you sleep good? Do you feel like you get good quality sleep? Do you feel like when you lay down, you fall asleep and then you sleep through the night? Fuck no. I, I sleep for about two hours. Then I'm awake. And then I sleep for another hour and a half. And then I'm awake. And then I sleep for another hour and a half. And then I'm awake. Dude, that is a massive gateway to people trying uh, CBD, right? That's I, I, I would bet unless you're trying, unless pain management or something like that. I mean, you know, when my, I, I, my mom's still alive, but when my mom was at home and boom, it, it's like, I, I, we talked to people. It's like, I don't get my mom weed, man. I mean, now my mom is not going to smoke or anything like that, but we got her some gummies, you know, and it's just right, like right. for pain management. So I, I don't have the statistics, I would think pain management for real. I mean, it, for somebody that really, really needs it. I talked about Dinah at the end of her life. And you know what? And I don't think her brother would mind me saying it. I've got a few friends. I'm not a guy that has, I'm a guy that has guys. And, uh, and I ended up getting her some stuff at the end of her life. And it's just, even the guys at MD Anderson said, do you know a guy you want to be, you need to be, it's like, I, we can't tell you this, nor can we give it to you. Right. We're in Texas, but if you know a guy, don't smoke, that'll, you can't have that, but edibles and stuff. So that, and then what we just talked about, sleep management, I think those are the gateways that get people in. And then there's the curiosity and everything else. But, sure, sure, sure. but I do think that whole sleep thing, because it's so important for us to get good sleep, that you do know. Right. And if the stuff that you is available to us, is non-addictive. Well, who who said that, Rod? I don't know. You're gonna have to believe somebody at some point in your life. You know, you're gonna have to believe believe one or two things that you read. So, if in fact it is non-addictive and it doesn't give you the hangover, and if it does help you with the sleep, boy, that's really attractive for a lot of people. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, because I mean, like my wife will take melatonin and, and there's other things you can yeah. take to sleep. I don't take anything. I've never taken anything. I barely take aspirin, right? But, you know, because of, you know, juggling a few things from day to day in life, my head's always racing on things. I'm like thinking about like, I'll wake up at three in the morning going, fuck, what are we going to talk about on the dumb podcast? Or, or wow, the radio station, I got to get that Foo Fighters song on the air. I got to do this. Or I'm thinking about pirates. I'm, you know, like anyone else, I've, I've got a lot of things rolling through my skull and I just wake up. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's nighttime. Go to sleep. You can't do nothing now. So I, that's why I don't sleep. And the other thing is you're not going to think about this until four or five podcasts down the road where it comes up again. Right. right. I mean, right. I know you. I know you. You're not going to think about it. You just, hey, th this is how I this is how I roll. I've, I, these things have already happened in my life. And then, boom, I'm just I'm set in my ways. Um but for the sleep thing, I do think it's something to think about. Me, I don't have a problem sleeping, although I'm just now starting to uh, to kind of get up in the middle of the night. Ugh. And, that sucks. And, then, and then I get up, and then I'm like, well, okay, well, I might as well go take a piss or whatever. Man, in the six hours that I do sleep, for all of these years now, it's – over it's 24 years doing mornings or something like that. Never all of our friends get up in the, you, oh, yeah. every, everybody gets up in the middle of the night and I don't have that. And I just always attribute it to, I don't sleep that much. So when I do boom, I just knock it all out. That's why I really don't nap because I want to just sleep all the way through. So I never really napped during the day, but I'm just getting to the point now where I might be adding myself to this discussion going, okay, you know, maybe I, I am going to maybe need to check out this, that space. You know, it, I guess it's one of those things where if, if there's no uh, hangover, which, you know, kind of glad I haven't had one of those for a couple of years. Yep. Um, and it's not really messing with you too much, you know, yep. nothing more than eating a bag of chips every day. Yep. Then why wouldn't I be eating fucking gummies on a nightly basis or whatever the hell it is? I, I mean, what's the, why not? Because right. you're not going to think about it. For some reason, it's just not hitting you. After we're done with this discussion, you're going to forget we had it. And you're not going to think about it for a, six podcasts down the road when it comes up. But you know why? Because <laughs> in the back of my head, it's, it's not legal. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's totally cool. Everything's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. But there's no, someone the in the back of my head going, nah, you might not want to do that. The stuff that they sell over the counter at the yeah. CBD places in, and you can get these, the, these Delta eights. And we've talked about this a little bit, Delta eight. I don't know if you can get Delta nine or Delta 10. Um, but you know, that's the stuff where it's like, I think you'll sleep, man. <laughs> but am I high? Like, am I fucking like sitting there? I eat that. And I'm like, fuck dude, this is well, awesome. And then, you know, yeah, the Delta stuff is the Delta stuff is like that stuff. I've been told that stuff will get you high. Now, there's nighttime gummies and it's lesser. Right. And then you got to kind of play with it. Then you got to, you got to open it up. You got to play with them a little bit. You got to let them breathe. Okay. And yeah, then you got to figure okay. out what works for you. It's like, you're going to pop a gummy. You're like, shit, nothing happened. I still woke up. I pissed three times last night. You know? Okay. Well, then what's, suck. Yeah. what's the deal? What can I, so I, you know, I guess everybody's going to be different on that. Yeah. I don't know. What? Well, so I don't, I don't smoke. I don't do this. Obviously, we're having a discussion between two mooks that don't know shit about weed. All so right. it's kind of a, if we're just sitting here pissing in ourselves. We don't, we're not even really getting anywhere, but it's okay. I, I might have to experiment down the road. It's just going to become the, it's going to, something's going to fall to the sky. And, and then next thing you know, I'm going to be like, all right, let's fucking do this shit. What's the, uh, I guess, you know, I guess if you do smoke or you do get high, what's your like go to snack? Because like the big thing about getting high apparently is you're hungry after munchies. For some reason. The the munchies. munchies. What's your so I thought, well, what's your go to chip? What's your all time like fuck this? If you're gonna eat chips, and I'm a sucker for chips, like what's yeah. that one you I don't care about health or none of that bullshit. What's yeah. that one that's like this is my fucking bag every time? Don't have to think about it. Cheetos. Really? Absolutely a hundred percent. Now I know you. I'm going to say at the top of your list is Cool Ranch Doritos. You know what? You're right. That was going to be my uh, my go-to. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll fucking eat those things all day long. That's your number one. That is my number one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the difference between Jason and I. We lived together, everybody knows, for, for quite a while. So I knew, I knew that was his go-to snack. 
This little dickhead can get a big old bag, the family size bag, and he can eat 10 chips, roll it up and put it back in the fucking counter. Okay. Tubby can't do that. Okay. I cannot take 10, 15 Cheetos and roll it up neatly like little skinny Jason and put it back into the fucking <laughs> cupboard. I can't. Once the beast is out, it's out. Okay. I'm eating till I'm fucking sick of them. I, I it's, yeah. it's, it's heroin to me. It, it really is. And you've always had really good self control on it. Not as much. It made me, it, I, I hated you for it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. there goes Jason. He's getting fucking wild. He's going to eat 10 Doritos right now. <laughs> Dick. <Crazy> fucking nut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, uh, that, that was always my go to. But I, you know, I'll eat a lot of different chips nowadays, but like the, the Dorito, I won't eat Doritos hardly at all anymore. Like occasionally I'll eat them because I just, I feel like I got heartburn and shit afterwards. I can't eat that stuff anymore. It kills me. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, so I don't do it. I know it's, uh, it's brutal. So what is like, I used to have these weird deals where like, you know, you'd come home and maybe my wife is on vacation with my kid or something. Or for some reason I've got like a Saturday night all to myself and I'm like, I'm going to fucking eat like a 14 year old boy right now. I'm going to eat just shit tonight. Like what's your go-to just unhealthy. Like you're going to sit down and make that old school craft macaroni and cheese, fucking hot dogs. You're going to throw it on some chips. Like what, what's your go-to dirty <sighs> meal? I will, I will check for a frozen pizza first. First thing first, it's, it's still, the shittiest frozen pizza <laughs> is still pizza to me. And man, I try to never, I try to at all times have a couple, like at, at least one, you know, I'm not like, I'm not hoarding them like Mormon, like with their canned food, but I have to have at least one DiGiorno pizza in my freezer. I got, you know, the beer, I got the beer fridge in the garage. So it's got the freezer on top and I always, at, I always have a an emergency DiGiorno pizza in there, and that would be. Now I get it. That's you don't you want instant gratification, and that's why you grab chips when you come home if you're drinking, and yep. and boom, you've everything's got fucking ranch dressing on it. It's disgusting, you know. Ah, oh shit, no, dude! Remember we used to go to Fat City all the time. We get drunk before five o'clock in the morning, and you haven't eaten since noon probably because we go right after work or whatever it was, and we go out drinking for fucking hours and there'd always be one of those shitty gas stations and we'd be in there just shredding bags of chips fucking yes. not even paying for half of this shit chips fucking all over the store we go in and they'd have those freezers and they had these meat thing burgers and they'd have the microwaves so yes. we'd fucking be in there cooking and it was just i don't know if it was fucking squirrel meat or what these things were made microwave of microwave burritos delicious and we would sit there and fucking eat those things we'd sit right in the store and just fucking be wasted leaning on shit and then we get like a second win and we're like how you doing i'm like good how you doing i'm all right let's go back in there and get some more drinks <laughs> so fucking yeah terrible. that stuff i know i try not to even keep that stuff on hand no. I, I feel like so we're doing so this week we're doing, uh, we're giving away Nickelback tickets and we came up with this stupid thing years ago, Nickelback and a snack. So I bring in my prize wheel and then boom, I bought a bunch of snacks. I got snack packs and I got crunch and munch and I got Swedish fish, you know, little Debbie's ho-hos. Ooh, ho-hos. Well, yeah, they look like hockey pucks, right? Yeah. So I really don't, even with the kid, I really don't buy a lot of that junk. OK, you, you know, you got a kid, you got to give him some fun stuff. You got to have some popsicles on hand right. and you got to have some fun things. And we do. We have chips. She likes those spicy pretzels, the dots pretzels. We that's our Friday night, man. Boom. Frozen pizza, pretzels, movie room, fucking Finding Nemo. And then boom, that's a night. But because we're doing this nickelback and a snack, I had to go to the store. And again, fucking fat boy. I just, I, I didn't do any extra shopping. I just went to buy all the shit for the wheel of Nickelback snacks. God, that's so and bad. I felt like such a POS. Yeah. And I, I never go through that scan your own shit, but I felt so much shame with what I was buying. I bought chicken in a biscuit, crackers with the squeezed cheese. The oh. whole thing. Yes. 
I felt so much shame. I did not want another human being seeing what I was buying. And I went through the self checkout, which I try to avoid. Um, it's just, that's just me, but I did. And I, I felt like, again, everyone was looking at me, look at that fucking tub of shit <laughs> with little <laughs> Debbie oatmeal snack cakes, the fucking family size. Look at him. Everything that I was buying was a heart attack in a box. Dude, you should have fucking went in there and in line and just fucking ripped one of them open, started chomping on a Twinkie, hanging out of your mouth and fucking spitting it as you talked and Bro. running your car through. Dude, you should have just owned it. You should have just owned it, man. I, I just finally watched Brendan Fraser. Whale. I haven't seen the whale. It yeah. Oh, my God, dude. He eats like that. He eats like that. At one point, he's eating. No spoiler. Um, he's fat. No, no, no. He's not fat. He is morbidly obese, and it is very difficult to see somebody get themselves to that point in their life where they really can't do much. And he's not old. You know, it's one thing if you're an old person or whatever, but he eats like you're talking. Ugh. And at one point, it's like he's almost trying to kill himself. He's like, that's it. I'm just done. And he's got the, you know, he's got the, the, the cupboard, the drawer full of candy bars and that type of thing. You know, the guy delivers two pizzas every night and that he eats two pizzas every night. You know, Jesus, carbs. Oh, it's um, I definitely see why he got the Oscar for best actor. Wow. It's uh, it's good. It's uh, at times difficult to watch, but whale. Brendan Fraser, right. big Nickelback and a snack. Like he would have loved Nickelback and a snack. You can fucking call her 10 every time. So yeah, go-to for me is having that frozen pizza. Oh, and uh, if I can wait, you know, I mean, I'm not going to eat it frozen. I've never been, I've never been so wasted that I'm going to eat a frozen pizza frozen. Have me committed, please. Have you, have you ever put that thing in the oven, passed out, smoke coming out? You had to have done that. I don't think so. I had to have done that. Um, I do it now and I'm not drunk. <laughs> but but I have I I have had a few projects started and then went to bed and then just came home or came downstairs the next day. I'm like, shit. What the fuck was I doing I last know, night? Fucking can of soup and shit. I'm like, what? I don't know what I, I can't even like make any rhyme or reason of like the things that I was putting together. Right. Right. Like, whoa, this is a good thing that none of these things mixed last night. No, no, that's not fucking healthy either, man. All right. So <laughs> I want to get to our top five smoking joint weed songs here in a minute, but I want to give, I want to go through a quick, uh, quick, uh, this or that type of quiz. Right. It's a simple, it's like this and like this and like this and like that. We should have an intro for it, dude. I could sing it. Oh, uh, well, could well, maybe not. All right. So it's just rapid fire. You don't have to think a whole lot about it. Nothing. This is difficult here. So it's kind of a, would you rather, okay. That type of thing. Would you rather have, uh, would you rather have dinner with Oprah or Elon Musk? Oh, Elon Musk in a second. I, Oprah Winfrey, fuck her. I know she's done a ton of good stuff, but man, she's so fucking full of herself. Yeah. She really is. I mean, I get it. You know, when you do a lot of charity, you know, I'm sure there's people saying, you know, that I've got ulterior motives for whatever. It just, Oprah just became this out of touch fucking asshole. Rich, out of touch. Yeah. And, and she's going to tell you stories going, she's going to tell you stories about history. Elon's going to tell you about, we're going to fucking Jupiter, bro. I like that. You know what I mean? Like I like that's, that. that's, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. And uh, you, you saw him on, you saw him on Joe Rogan smoking weed. And I do believe he fucking pushed the launch to 420. I think that rocket's going up on Thursday. It's brilliant. They're going to try again. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Elon Musk pushed it to 420. That's pretty cool. That when you're trying to launch a rocket into outer space, you're like, ah, fuck it. Let's just do it on 420. Like what kind of crazy nut jobs are, I mean, that's brilliant. I love that shit. I love why, that shit. Just off the top of your head, why do people hate Elon Musk? People got no fucking other shit to do in their lives, I guess. I don't know. I, apparently he fucked up Twitter and it's like, I don't know. I, for me, Twitter's still kind of the same shit. I still follow who I follow and I don't give a fuck about anything else. Everyone's all upset. Oh, I don't get the blue check. I got to pay for the blue check. Do you though? Do you really have to pay for it? I don't know if you do. 
I told a story once coming out of the grocery store and I saw a sticker on a garbage can and it said, um, <sighs> being a billionaire should be illegal. Mm, that's silly. I don't feel that way. Like mm. I don't hate somebody that is brilliant. Well, do you know how many people they had to squash to get? Yeah, fuck yeah, everybody does that, man. Everybody does that, okay? Yeah. You're going to be sitting there on your long walk to the middle, and these people are gonna just going to climb on top of you. Uh, people don't like billionaires. They just don't think they should be allowed to be billionaires. That's fucking crazy to me. That's absolutely fucking the nuttiest thing that you could say. I don't think anybody should be a billionaire. It's dumb. Well, come up with something fucking cool and become one yourself. I mean, that's how do you, you don't just get handed a billion dollars. You just don't usually, I mean, look at Elon Musk. He's done it. You Nobody, know, uh, Bezos. Nobody's been handed a billion dollars. Now people will say, well, you know, Donald Trump, he got that small million dollar loan back in the day. Okay. That stuff happens all the time. Yeah. Nobody's been given a billion dollars. Mm -mm, no, you got to earn it. And you got to be smart. You know, yes. uh, Amazon, that dude, Jeff Bezos, he fucking ate shit for years trying to get that thing off the ground. And now he's a billionaire and people are like, oh, he's just some dumb billionaire. Yeah. I wouldn't call him dumb. <laughs> I'd say he's pretty damn smart and took his time to get there. Elon Musk, you know, the boring company that he did, he was trying to d dig tunnels under LA or some shit to try and fix the traffic. I don't know if that ever worked or not, but you know what? He was, he's thinking in these massive, massive, how do you save the world sort of projects, right? And I can't even build a shed, you know? And, and he's thinking on these yeah. global or international or, or intergalactic fucking things. And he's, doing them yeah, fuck yeah you can be a billionaire that's cool i'm cool yeah. with that. no that i remember talking about it and when i asked you why do you think people you know hate him because he he has a lot of hate and i don't think it's twitter i think this, the fact that he's a billionaire people have a problem with that i'm like well fuck I mean, man he's brilliant I he's a brilliant wish, guy. i kind of wish he would just not fuck with twitter these other little projects and keep getting us to space and keep Put all your eggs in that basket now. I want to see what the fuck he's going to do in the next 20 years with that shit. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. This went longer than I thought. Uh, would you? This was an easier one. Would you rather become a fish or a bird? Think about it for a second. Think about it. A fish or a bird? Ocean's pretty big. A lot of cool shit down there. A lot of cool shit down there, but man, I don't feel like there's one easy day being a fish. Oh, no. you <laughs> Fucking everything wants to eat you. Right. I think you can kind of chill out and be a bird. I think you just kind of sit around on a tree, shit on people. I think you can kind of relax being a bird. I don't think you're constantly living in, I don't think you're constantly looking over your feathered back. When you're a fish, shit could go fucking wrong at all times of the day for you. Like, think about think it. About this. You, like, like, think about it, man. We're hanging out and you just fucking look at me and you just fucking bow and you eat me. That's how yeah. fish roll. They don't give a fuck about each other. They just eat anything they want. It's nuts. I mean, I like fish better than birds, but I would have to pick the bird. Yeah, flying would be cool. Flying would be pretty fucking cool. I think that'd be kind of neat. Uh, would you, and you got to be careful with this one, dude, because this will be on tape. There will be someone who could go dig this up later. Uh, college right after high school or a gap year? I'm going to isolate this, save it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because my kid, what are you going to put this out? Are you going to send this to my kid when she turns 17? Yep. I'll be like, here you go. Um, <laughs> um, I'm down for the gap year. You got to leave me a body part or something. You, <laughs> It's me writing down that you're going. I, I, need, I need something, though, in writing because and, – and if things happen and you – whatever, but – I'm going to need some kind of a commitment that, okay, I'll give you the year, but I, that would be awesome. I wish I did it. So oh, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm jealous of anybody that's got a backpacking story for a year and sleeping underneath the fucking Eiffel tower and smoking weed in hostels with people from all over the world. And, you know, yeah, I, yeah, for yeah. sure. I think that's pretty uh, cool. Um, uh, would you rather be invisible or able to uh, read minds. I mean, when you're younger, that's always the thing that you say because you want to go. I mean, I don't. We would have this discussion when we, we were little kids, and all I could think about was going into the girls' locker room. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the first thing out of every dude's face 
It's like, if I was invisible, I could be in the girl's locker room right now. Like, right. chicks, chicks in the locker room. <sighs> a short-sighted, Reed. Rod. Short-sighted. I know, but reading minds? Mm-hmm. Get my fucking feelings hurt. You would, but you also would be able to have answers for everything immediately, and you could read everything, and you'd be like, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to get I, – I, you would know every button. You could be looking at chicks and be like, oh, no, she doesn't like me. Nope, she hates my guts. No, nope. yeah, I guess it would get a little bit hard to take after a while. Isn't there some Mel Gibson movie where he hears everything, every thought that's in people's mind? I, I think is, so. it a Mel, is it a Mel Gibson movie? I, I think it might I think it might drive you mad. It would. I think, I think it might drive you mad, and I think, again, it's probably a better thing, just like I think a fish would be cooler, but I got to go with the bird. I think it would be maddening, the reading the minds. I really do. I think you go with the invisible thing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you could turn it on and off, like a switch, like, okay, now I want to be able to read minds, that would be great. To have that control. In invisibility, too. If you had that switch where you just go like that, and next thing you know, you're invisible, that'd be fucking cool. Dude, you could walk in anywhere. You could walk in. You could be in Elon anywhere. Musk's office at an emergency meeting, and you would know everything. Okay, here's something fucked up. Say, say you got a guy that you fucking hated for years and you're invisible. You walk into his office. If you piss on his desk and it splashes up on him, he'll feel it. But will he see the piss? Yeah. Like when does the uh, invisibility, where is the cutoff line for invisibility? Like, you, <laughs> I mean, you still got to poop when you're invisible. It, is your come out invisible or all of a sudden there it is laying on the, some dude's desk. Big I think anything that leaves your body is of your world, not in my invisible world. Ah, so I, I think know. you would see my pee and poop. That's messed up. I don't know how we got down this fucking road. This is bad. <laughs> um, would you rather have a personal chef or a personal trainer? <laughs> That's a hard uh, one, man. <laughs> I've had a personal trainer before, man. Somebody cooking for you all the time has to be fucking awesome. Cause it's gonna that be healthy has... too. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, frozen pizza. But I mean, ask anybody when if if it, if it was just from a losing weight standpoint, which I need to lose weight. Eighty percent importance. Eighty-five. Some will say as much as ninety percent importance. What you're putting into your body rather than working out and doing all of that stuff. It's way more important what you eat than your workout routine. So from that standpoint, but man, just to eat different shit. The yeah. problem is now that I'm experiencing is I'm back to living by myself and I cook like I was in the fucking army. When I make something, I'm making it for 600 people and I can't help myself. Right. right and it's right, 10 right. times worse. It, I mean, at least there was somebody here and whatever. I cook like I'm cooking for a mess hall and right. I can't, I can't help myself. Chowder, anything on the weekend. It's just, I make too much of it. So having a personal chef would be so unbelievable. They should have a grocery store just for single people where it's like, just like, instead of having the whole, all that big thing of fucking pasta, it's just this little guy for one, <laughs> everything's for one a little thin skinny thing, little thin quarter, quarter, what is it? A quarter milk. I mean, just everything is just for fucking one little mini that Coke sucks. cans. Just... You're dirting all these pans and then you're fucking washing. I know, like, I know. Man, it wasn't sucks. that good. I mean, that's where you start to get a little lazy. Now I I'm not sitting around eating grilled cheese and I'm not to that point. I'm still trying to eat healthy. You know, you cook up a bunch of chicken breasts and you can do a lot of different things with chicken breasts, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, cooking by yourself. I mean, I, listen, I, I'm not looking for any sympathy here, boo-hoo. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's a little different. Having somebody cook, a personal chef would be fucking awesome. See, my issue is that like, you know, you have, you got kids, right? So you, you, you make, you know, the wife, the me, the kid and stuff, whatever. And I cook shit up. Well, I know so often that once that shit hits the Tupperware and hits the refrigerator, it's a pretty good chance. It's not going to come out of there until I throw it in the garbage. You know what I mean? Like it's just leftovers are not something this family does. And I hate that. I do. I'll eat a lot of it. So I'll just eat everything. I'll stand there in, in front of the fucking refrigerator with a pan and eat the rest of it. Cause I don't want to waste it. But I'm you still into that mentality. You came from a house that you didn't throw away food. You, you don't throw away shit. So I'm used to that. So I will sit there and finish everything. And then I get yes. back. Uh, so I, I was born and raised the same. Just came out this week. There was an article that we're all responsible for something like $98 of food a week we throw away. Something right. silly. I mean, it was almost $100, right? And 
not only were we raised that way not to to waste food, but in a when you work in a restaurant, which I did for a long time, man, you just that chicken becomes chicken a la king. It becomes soup. That's why the restaurant sells soup. You know, that you chop it up and it becomes something else. You repurpose all the food and you turn it into other things because you don't throw away food. Okay, that that uh, all that bread is stale. Okay, let's make bread pudding, you know. You used almost everything there, you know, and you reused it for something else. You didn't throw food away. You know what? You, if it's 100 bucks a week, how much does a fucking personal chef cost to come in and cook you? You know, could actually cook a couple things ready for you. 100 bucks a week, there you go. And you're not going to waste the, the, the food, and it's going to be better prepared. It's going to be better for you. I mean, I'm just spitballing here. It's going to cost more than that. It's going to cost more. But think about <laughs> it, though. You're going to eat healthier, which is going to long-term save you money, and then you're not going to hopefully waste as much. Because our issue at my house is like, we all come home and it's like there's soccer, there's fucking podcasts, there's this, there's that, there's a so it's like ah, cook something. Who gives a shit what it is? Let's just eat. And then we're gone. Like it's so fast and furious that you know, no one sits down and actually cooks a meal yeah. properly. You're eating half, you know, you're eating tacos and shit. And it's just not well cooked food, you know. It's some of it's processed and it's bad. We're on the go a lot more than we were when we were young. I mean, we sat down and had dinner when we were young. And yep. And, you know, I know a lot of a lot of times what my daughter eats on the weekend, I'm not eating. So I'm cooking two different things. Right. And my mom did not do that. No, I'm making one thing. It's not like if you don't like it, you don't have to eat. No, you're eating it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're eating it. All right. You're, you're eating it. You know, it wasn't. Yeah. I'm, this is what is available today. And everybody's eating the same fucking thing. And you didn't, you didn't question it. No, it was weird. My house, my mom was a, a stickler for that kind of thing. It was like, you eat this. I cooked it. I took the time to cook it. We don't have a lot of money. You're going to eat it. And there's just, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't like something, you don't like it. There's no twisting that around. Like, I'll try shit. Nah, don't like it. And I won't eat it again. And I knew what I didn't like. But my mom would sit there and say, you're not getting up from this table. Yeah. You finish everything on your plate. And I would sit there and there'd be certain things I didn't like. And I remember there was something, I forget what it was, but I, I put it in my mouth and I tried to swallow it and I almost barfed. I did the old, Ooh. she goes, if you throw that up, I will make you eat. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of fucking house do I live in? <laughs> but, you know, trying to get the point across. My dog got fat. My dog got real fat. <laughs> I yeah, fucking feed the dog everything. Fido under the table. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the way it was at our house. So, so now, like, that's where I come in, where, like, if we make a pot of rice or something with everything at, uh, for dinner. I'm going to sit there and we're putting shit away and I'll finish it up. And that's how I always would gain weight. Yeah. I didn't waste but, any food that way. <laughs> shout out to, I mean, we were not, we were not a hamburger helper family. Okay. Every, my mom made everything. Wow. We, we had spaghetti and then we had meatloaf and then we had pork chops and sauerkraut. And then we had roast beef, you know, to make it go further my mom would put a piece of white bread down, grave, brown gravy, a couple pieces of roast beef, another piece of bread on top, and then cover the whole fucking thing in gravy. And then mashed potatoes. I mean, we were meat and potatoes. My mom cooked every day. Yeah. She cooked dinner every day for us growing up. Crazy. Yeah, we, we got a lot of that, too. But then, you know, we would use the hamburger helper and other shit along the way, too. But, I mean, yeah. No, if it was, I didn't like it, man. That was that. <laughs> Yeah, that was that. My my son, that was, uh, I don't like that. Okay, we'll cook you something else. And we just, you know, cook him other shit and he's happy. And it's like, oh, yeah, wow, you're getting away with a lot here, boy. But then he tells me, okay, pops, <laughs> am I on your lawn, dad? And I'm like, all right, <laughs> little fucker. Um, would you hire for talent or hire for experience? Oh, that's a good one. I like that one. I'm, hi I'm hiring this person. You're hiring somebody for talent? Or for experience, like what's what if you had to choose, like if someone's super talented and no experience or tons of experience and <laughs> not really any talents. <laughs> so we would, you know, that song, don't, don't you want me? Right. Dun, dun. The human. Would, uh, yeah. So I was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. When I called Dinah, she was fucking taking an order of grouper sandwiches to a table. 
<laughs> when I called Dinah, now she was on the radio, part of a morning show thing, but she was waiting tables. So when I called her, when I called her and told her that she got the job, she had the least amount of experience. Uh, of anybody that I had talked to and anybody that I had brought in to do those inner, those uh, we did on air. They did a show with me, each one of the gals back then. Um, she had the least amount of experience, but she was the fucking weirdest one. She was the one that had that raw talent. So that right. answers your question. It was, it's yeah. a raw talent thing. Now, you know, Tessa was different, but Tessa kind of the same though. Um, there was just a little, but she, she had more experience. Donna did not have a whole lot of experience. Um, but I, I hired because she was, there was just something. I knew that that weirdness, if you could harness that weirdness, it would be good every day, you know, right, 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 I mean, right, right. because you want a little bit of awkwardness and you want a little bit of, you know, um, that unpolishedness was came through and it, right. and it worked, you know? So, I mean, everybody's different, but yeah, for sure. Uh, talent over experience. Yeah, I always tell people too, it's like, I, I want someone who's enthusiastic and willing to learn. I could teach you the bullshit basics of, of radio or whatever the job is, you know? You can't teach enthusiasm. You just can't. You can't prod someone to be fired up, you know? Because I've we've all worked with people who are just kind of, they're talented, but they're not driven. They're, they're mopey, they're quiet. It's like, get the fuck, wake up. <laughs> Yeah. You know, let's go get a cocaine habit or something. Will you? Jesus. Um, <laughs> all right. That uh, that's uh, that's enough of that horse shit. So uh, coming up, our favorite weed smoking songs. Wow. This um, I didn't have a huge list uh, I had because you know what? It, weed songs are everywhere in the hip hop community. Everywhere in yeah, hip hop. And if that's if that's your wheelhouse, man, you could probably have a top 10, top 20 list of your favorite songs because it doesn't have to be weed in the title. We're talking about references and those types of things, right? Yep. That, anything. I, yeah. Anything. Okay. I don't have a whole lot of <clears throat> hip hop references. I, if you're shocked, Brad, I'm, I'm sure you are. I don't I don't have any really. Oh, no, I might have one. I guess I'll have to get to that when we get there. But uh, yeah, I got uh, I got five decent ones. Okay, I think I got five decent ones too. Yeah. Uh, all right, so coming up, uh, four twenty. <laughs> Way to sell it! <laughs> I got a couple decent ones. Yeah, me too. Uh, coming up, our, five, our top five favorite stoner four twenty weed songs. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be heading to New Orleans in a couple of weeks. Oh, uh, shit. You bringing your weed? I'm bringing, my, uh, I'm bringing my kids, so no weed, and I'm flying, so no weed, mm. and um, I don't have any weed to bring, so no. Um, but I'll be coming into New Orleans, and uh, Jazz Fest is coming up in a couple of weeks. It's a great time to be in New Orleans right now. If you are planning a visit to New Orleans, be sure to book the Pirate Tour. Still our lone, very lonely sponsor here of the Play Pants podcast. It's a French Quarter walking tour. It is like no other. You're going to discover real pirate history of New Orleans. Book your tour at piratesofthequarter.com. And then go to their website, and they've got some all new, amazing merchandise now. They got nice. some great t-shirts. Nice. Piratesofthequarter.com. Is it nice? You like that stuff, huh? Soft. It's very soft. That's very good. Soft. Soft t-shirts are clutch. So, kick-ass t-shirts available online. You can book your tour online as soon as you buy your tickets. Or for those of you that are listening in New Orleans, hey man. Go down to the fucking French Quarter. It's like one of the coolest places on the planet. I say that because Jason laughs because he knows people that live there. They're like, yeah, I'm not going down there. It's dangerous. It's dirty. I don't like it. It could be 10. You, you could live in Metairie or Kennerbra, and you could be 10, 15 years the last time you went to the French Quarter. It's a very common story. Yeah. Go down and take the pirate tour, man. Uh, everything is at piratesofthequarter.com, at piratesofthequarter on all socials so so rob before we dive into this let me just i want to point out two quick things uh if you're thinking of advertising on the play pants podcast just let me go. give you a quick little testimonial right here uh as an advertiser on this podcast uh we do get results people are booking tours because of this podcast uh we hear it all the time when we're out there doing these tours oh man i heard you on the play pants podcast i'm like you did cool so 
it's it's it, it this is an effective way to advertise depending on what your product is so just reach out to us if you want to spend a few trillion dollars you know make us billionaires and then you can hate us it's pretty simple um you'd be, tour, what you'd be surprised how cheap it is to to advertise on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty inexpensive actually. you'd be surprised i mean you'd be very surprised you'd be very surprised how free it is uh for us anyway uh that being said i was on a tour yesterday i believe I had some people down the french quarter showing them around a good time telling them some stories and uh some lady comes up behind me and says hey do you have a phone i think i'm having a heart attack okay that right there would send alarms off into the, your average person. But because yeah. I am in the French Quarter every single day, basically, doing tours, I get fucked with constantly, right? Yeah. And there's a scam a second down there. Hey, I know we got them shoes, all that shit, right? So I mean, I'm like, I'm like thinking to myself, go fuck yourself, right? Like, that's exactly the first thing I think every single time. Well, then I look at the lady and she's thin and she's probably in early 40s, doesn't look super healthy. But uh, she's clutching her chest and her eyes are kind of looking weird. I'm like, oh, maybe she's not fucking with me. So one of the dudes that were on the tour, he goes, hold on. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll dial 911. You know, are you sure? Before I start dialing 911, are you sure? You know, and are she's like, yeah. People, are there a ton of people around? I mean, we're in the we're in the backside of St. Louis Cathedral there on Royal Street, right by okay. uh, Orleans. You know, where we're, we're hanging right there telling she, stories. And one she's dude's by like, herself. Oh. she's by herself. She's like, okay. she's like, oh, my, me and my husband got separated and all this shit. So she, I said, well, sit down. He starts dialing a 911 and he's talking with the operator and they're asking a bunch of questions. Have you, you know, have you eaten today? Have you drank? Are you dehydrated? Have you taken any drugs? Have you done this? Have you done that? Hit the brakes. Let's go back to take a little drugs. <laughs> she goes, yeah, I took some. And this falls right into our story from earlier. She's like, yeah, took a couple gummies, had some edibles. And then I went for a run. Now, me not knowing shit about any of this stuff, I'm thinking might not have been the right thing, you know, and uh, she didn't look super healthy. And uh, so the whole time she's sitting there clutching her chest and I'm like, holy fuck, I hope this lady doesn't die sitting here. It's gonna be weird. Right. So and she's we got her calm and stuff and 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 all this stuff. So the the one person on the tour was kind of a nurse and she knew first aid. So she started like saying, hey, do this, do that. Don't do that. She gets on the phone with a 911 operator. Five minutes later, literally five or 10 minutes later, there's a fire truck, the EMT show up, boom, and then they took over, right? I'm, we're out of there. We're done. Game over. So as we're sitting there waiting for the fire truck, you know, we're, we hang up with 911, and I'm like, this lady says she's having a heart attack, and she has all the signs of it. She's like, yeah, my toes are tingling. And women's uh, signs of a heart attack are different than a man's, right? You know, the dudes, your, your left arm goes numb or whatever the hell it is, and, and women's heart attack signs are different so okay. she's having she's having the legit signs and i'm like you just hang up with 911 and you hope <laughs> coming down the street is a fucking cavalry so you've got this time wow. period wait 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 they don't keep you on the line no they're like okay we got everything we need it should be there in a minute <laughs> I'm like, okay, see you, bye. And then we're sitting there too. You know, all these strangers standing around this lady sitting not having a heart attack apparently. Right. I could have, I thought they would say we're going to hang on the line because if something happens, maybe they could walk somebody through CPR or, nope. you know what I mean? No, they were good. Uh -huh. They're like, no, we got you. Wow, that's wild. It's like ordering a pizza. You good? You got it. Yeah, your address. Okay, all right, we're good. Okay, we'll see you later. Good luck. If you need something, we'll hit you back. What? So anyway, so we're sitting there and, and we're waiting for the trucks. So we're trying to make small talk, but we're trying. No one's no one's being funny. No, one, I'm not. I'm just sitting there going, "You okay? Are you cool?" And all this shit. So this chick who's having a heart attack pulls out a cigarette and tries to light the fucking thing. And I go, "Hey, hey, you're having a fucking heart attack and you're gonna smoke a cigarette." I'm just thinking out of the box here. That might not be the best uh, choice right now. Holy shit. But it's a stress thing. She was freaking. And, that's, yeah. you know, when you smoke, that's what you do. So, yeah, that was a little entertaining the other day in the French Quarter that, uh, you know, maybe when someone comes up to you and says they're having a heart attack, probably listen to them, I guess. Not a scam. It's not like the latest scam. It, I don't know. But, yeah, no, I, I guess she's all right. I'm assuming she, uh, she, she survived it, I hope, because I didn't hear anything. So, yeah, but. What was interesting was the 911 call. Again, they were great. Everything was cool. They had taken pulses and shit of the girl. And I would then, want them staying on the line. I would want them staying. It's, what if it was what if it was just you and the woman? You don't know her. 
She doesn't know you. You're on 911. I'm not letting that chick hang up. She's like, okay, well, they'll be there in a minute. Okay, well, you're going to fucking hang out with me. You're going to hang out with me. You're- See, I didn't have control. I know, I know. You know, it was, it was the dude. He goes, he goes, all right, they're going to be here in a minute. I'm like, hmm. Like all things, I'm sure they don't have the people, the amount of people no, that they no. used to have there. And she might have said, okay, fucking this the other line's ringing here, 911. I got to go take that one. You know, maybe they don't, they can't stay on the line with you because they're so busy. Right. It just seems like you would wait with the person until the the help got there. Yeah, the whole thing was weird. Sure. It's a staffing issue thing. Yeah, yeah. And it was fine. I mean, everyone was cool. Everyone played their role. The, the, the fire department dude showed up. They're like, we got it. We're cool. Uh, you know, I'm like, do we need to hang out? And they're like, no, <laughs> we're the pros. I'm like, okay, cool. See you. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, wild, dude. Just wild. But, you know, it's, really it just wild. goes to- Jesus just goes to show you, you don't know what's going to happen when it's going to happen. And you just got to kind of be calm and get through it. And, and everyone was cool about it. Everyone stood around, teamed up, banded together, and we handled it. You know, it was very bizarre. Yeah. Very bizarre. Wow. Yeah. Crazy shit. Okay. Well, transitioning into 420. See? Pot. The, the code for the pot smokers, 420 is a huge day. It's a huge day, I'm sure. Fucking Seth Rogen is having a party somewhere right now. Yeah, Snoop Dogg is having a party. All those guys are doing their party thing. I find those guys that are, again, there's no difference. It's just as annoying to me as craft beer guy. I was the guy the that thing. just loves craft beer so much, and he just likes talking about it. Weed guys like that for me. Like, you just mm-hmm. want to sit around and talk about fucking weed? Like, it's weird. I don't want... To be with anybody that is just into one thing. I, I, I can't, I don't want, I don't share any of their interests. They only have one interest. And if I'm not that interested in it, then I just assume I don't like that person. It's, I mean, it's, a, shitty, it's a shitty way for me to live my life. I just don't like somebody that's just into one thing. Well, you can smoke weed and still talk about other things. Weed is just a, a thing. You know, you can drink a beer and talk about all kinds of dumb shit like we do. Do you think, do you You feel that, I mean, Seth Rogen made a ton of movies, really funny guy. I think we even did a top five on this list when it was his birthday. Right. Don't you feel that weed defines him? Yeah, because it's it's in all his movies, it feels like, and he's he's now got a weed store somewhere, I guess, in California. He grows his own shit. It's it's a product now. Done one interview for any project he's ever done where weed didn't come up. Probably not. Well, you create your own animal, though. I think because he's done that's it, made saying. the jokes, he's now that's it. That's he's stuck with it. You're right. It does put a label on you. It does. It defines the person. And then it's just like, I don't know. I think that's all you got going on. We might not, you know, he might not be that cool to hang out with. Yeah, not if he's going to sit around and laugh and just talk about weed all the right. time. That would be a little bit uh, dull. I got to be honest. All right. <laughs> this uh, list was not easy for me to put together. It took me a little while. It took me a little while because I was not putting that fucking Bob Dylan song on my list. Bob Dylan will never, ever, ever be in one of my top five lists unless we're doing the top five shitty something. Shitty singers, boom, he'll be in there. Um, Five overrated singers or artists. I didn't know that that song was called Rainy Day Women. Yeah, Rainy Day Women number 12 and 25. Well, I don't know, whatever the fuck it is. Everybody must get down. Um, yeah. They don't you when you wake up in the morning. It's back when some music just wasn't good, but people were stoned and they thought it was good. It's like the Grateful Dead. That's the opening track of fucking Blonde on Blonde. I mean, anybody that talks about Bob Dylan, they're like, that's like the greatest album of all time. I'm like, that's the fucking greatest album of all time? And it opens with that? Do those dudes even know how to play their instruments? Yeah, it's it's bizarre. I, I you know what? I don't even know how that Dylan thing comes up because I've seen know. I've gone to see Dylan a couple times, and God damn it, it's brutal. <laughs> it's fucking brutal. I tried. I tried to I listen to Dylan for a while, and I'm like, this is just not for me. It's just not in my wheelhouse. It's just not my thing. I don't know. Okay, okay. who's going first? Top five weed. Pot smoking songs. Well, I get the funny feeling that we're probably going to have. I would, I would gather we both got. We're going to have three of the same at least. We are. Think? I would think so. I mean, how many weed smoking songs really are there? Um, I was having trouble finding something I even knew. We're going like, to have. Is, we're going to have two that are the same. 
Yeah, I guarantee you. I, I know one for sure. Uh, let me let me go first. I'll, I'll just go through these fairly quickly because it's pretty pretty simple. Uh, I, and, and I don't think this song is about smoking weed, but I just like the song. And the song says smoking in it, and it's from Boston. Boston, smoking. Did I fail Great the song. exercise? I failed the exercise, yeah. probably. Oh, I think it's smoking. I mean, smoking. It, could be. I, some guy's going to write on our YouTube page, well, you know, he's talking about, you know, the lighting up the tires on his 1972 Charger. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Yeah, Smoking, it, it counts. It's a great yeah. song. It's great. It's a great song. I love that tune. Um, Sublime, Smoke Two Joints. That's a that's a good uh, hacky sacking <laughs> joint smoking song. <laughs> Smoke Two Joints from Sublime, which again, there's a band that I've never really understood. I know we play the shit out of Sublime. We played the shit out of them back in the 90s. And that's a weird band that just seems to stick. And I can't figure out why, because I never really liked much of their music. I just, I don't get it. I can, I can tell you that when a, a, an auditorium test is done and Sublime, the song hooks will be played. An auditorium test is 300 people in a big room. They play you songs. This is how they used to do it. They could probably right. do it digitally. I, I know there's a digital version of this that they can do it online now with people. They would play you song hooks and you would write down if you, there would be, you know, you it's your favorite song over here. You hate it over here. You're indifferent in the middle and then different levels. Burned out on it or whatever, yeah. And I can tell you that Sublime would be in the top 10. Beastie Boys would be in the top 10. Lincoln Park, um, Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and believe it or not, Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, will be in the top 10 approval rating. Sublime would be in that range, dude. Yep. It, it's just... That's one of those... I, I never could get Sublime. I'm like, were they just deemed the one like reggae band beach band of the nineties that we're like, okay, they're going to be our guys. We're going to ride this into the sunset to offset all the grunge and depressing shit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't get it. I mean, they're a fine band, all that stuff. I get it, but I just never connected with that. Anyway, uh, smoke two joints from sublime is good. Uh, <clears throat> there's a band here from new Orleans that had this crazy song uh, called let's go smoke some pot back in the mid nineties from dash rip rock. And the only reason I bring them up is because I think they're doing the, uh, a party tomorrow here in New Orleans on 420 Day because of that song. And it's a catchy tune. If you ever heard it, it's Let's Go Smoke Some Pot. And you're like, oh, okay, I get it. This is kind of fun because they're goofy uh, guys. It's based off the old 50 song, Let's Go to the Hop. Right. Let's Go Smoke Some Pot. It's, it, it's a fun, fun, goofy-ass rock song, you know? Was Fred in that band before Cowboy Mouth existed? Yeah, yeah he was in that band. So uh, Dash Rip Rock predates cowboy mouth in new orleans yeah and, and i i may have this wrong but i i think there was the reason fred left was because he was talented he could sing um and, but the singer dash rip rock the, the whole band was talented right it's three dudes and they're very you know they're goofy and they're they're fucking ready to rock they're they're good band but fred wanted to push his drum set to the front of the stage he's like fuck it i'm i'm a good drummer and i'm a fucking singer i'm going up front well, that was unheard of. Nobody was doing that shit. And uh, I guess they said, no, you're not doing it. So then I, I, Fred left and then he went and started Cowboy Mouth. At least that's the story I think how it goes, which is kind of funny and I could see it happening. So uh, the rest is, uh, is history, as they say. Uh, that was number three. Number two, this is, we're going to have this one. This one's for sure. Afro Man, Because I Got High. Come on. Because I Got High. Because I Got High. Come on. It's a great song. It's a great weed smoking song. I hate that song. I fucking hate it too. But I put it number two on my list because it fits this exercise really well. It is catchy as shit. I hate that song. Number one is obvious. This is going to be on your list. I guarantee it. If it's not, friend off. Uh, Sweet Leaf from Black Fucking Sabbath. How is this not on your list? Sweet Leaf. It, it starts off with coughing and choking, and it's all about smoking the weed. And it's a great fucking song. And I mean, listen, Black Sabbath is the first everything, you know, first metal band, first everything. They, they're they responsible for everything. So every time they did something, every single metal weed song owes it, owes them. It, that That's the first metal weed song, right? I mean, 
That's it. it. There's no question about it. I mean, I know that Led Zeppelin had some songs, you know, she drank my stuff and smoked my herb or whatever, but that's not like a weed song. That's just a, in, a lyric in the song. Yeah, no, I think you're right. So, two. Two? Oh, shit. Okay. Two. Okay. Two, 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 two. Okay, um, in at number five, I did put Dash Rip Rock on there. Let's go smoke some pot. Oh, baby, let's go smoke some pot. It's a fun song. And, you know, they got played on the radio. They oh, yeah. probably do get invited to 420 festivals and stuff like that because of that one silly song. But, yeah, it had a moment in the 90s. It never was huge. It certainly was a regional thing. Yep. Um, but radio stations did play that. And, uh and they kind of rode that out for a long, long time. I only had one experience with those guys a long time ago, and it didn't go well. I just, I, I, that's all I remember. And I certainly certainly wouldn't hold that against them, but I just, it didn't go well. No, no, I, I know. I remember it exactly what, how it went well, poorly. And you were, you, I think there's people holding you back a few times. You were pretty pissed off. I remember it fairly well, actually. Yeah. Was it something that was out by Lucy's and out in the street area? And I, for some reason, I don't remember why it didn't go well with those guys. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you. Because I told the story recently. You um, know the story? Yeah, I was standing fucking next to you. Did you I almost get a fight with them or something? It wasn't technically, but you wanted to. You wanted to fucking go on murder rage. Um, you were a little upset because we were do you you came up with this cool thing called Test Fest, right? Where it was a month long celebration of being a dude, you know, yes. scratched out on a napkin. We had all these events and we had a final concert. Okay. And we did it on the street uh, out there by Lucy's or wherever the hell it was. It wasn't Lucy's, Polynesian Joe's that used to be there, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. And we had a stage. And so we're having this final concert. There's fucking people everywhere. Well, we're only a year into it, maybe, or, or it wasn't like we were there for very long. Okay. And we were in a, starting to, because I get, I wrote the name of the band down and I just said, I think I got into it with them before, but you know, it was 30 years ago. So yeah. I'm not going to keep them off my list, but go ahead. So we got them to play. I don't know how that, I mean, they ended up playing because at the time they were still pretty hot, you know, in the area and uh, they played our festival. And at the time we had either just crushed our competition 1061 the zephyr i knew was, they were in bed with the other radio station that we had put under okay right. there was there was two out when we came when we signed on in new orleans right. there was a there was another alternative station and they only made it six months and then they went off the air we our station just was it really was it was just dominating right so then they were on stage playing and they they had said a couple of times and our banners are behind them i mean it's obvious why they're there that's why they're getting paid it's the whole thing right yeah and they went on and, and, and i think one i don't know if it was a singer somebody it had to be the singer and he went on and on about the 1061 the zephyr and he kept talking and, and everyone from the radio station's eyes just got lit up and we're all kind of getting mad and we're like what the fuck do we do now and and you're like let's go fucking kill him or what it was getting a little bit heated and then afterwards i'm like we should probably just go home we should probably get out of here yeah it, it's what it was in anyone in their defense that station they might have just been saying goodbye and thank you to it or whatever i don't know if it was truly nah, malicious they were being dicks but it feels like they were kind of being dicks about it because you didn't have that was not the time or the place so yeah, yeah. it was it was an interesting situation and, and i actually ran into the uh the drummer of the band uh recently and uh, I, I didn't bring it up, but I told the story after you left to some friends. I'm like, you know, <laughs> it's weird seeing this guy all these years later because <laughs> it didn't go well that day at the at the show. I remember being pretty pissed off. You're, all right. You're, you're a little upset. A little upset. Fuck, should I scratch them? All right. Well, that's why they're, they're at five. Yeah. They're at that's, five. That's why I was waiting when I said them. I was like, oh, he's going to fucking jump me on this one. <laughs> Just I couldn't really remember. I, I shouldn't remember that. I, who cares? It okay. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're fine. Uh, number four, <laughs> Beatles with a little help from my friends. Ooh, I'll see. That's good. That is I good. get by with a little help from my friends. I get, I get high with a little help from my friends. Nice it's one. a great fucking song. Do I know that that's what they're singing about? I don't know, but that's how it got onto my list. I thought it was great. There are, listen, the Beatles smoked forests. OK, I mean, <laughs> the Beatles smoked entire forests yeah. of weed. OK. You know, I am the walrus. Are they saying everybody smoke pot? Everybody smoke pot. I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. And then I did not know that 
Ooh, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Got to get you into my life is about weed. Really? Yes. Bob Dylan turned them on to weed and they loved it so much. It's like, I got to get you. I got to get you into my life. I, I thought it was about a chick. <laughs> I thought it was about a chick too. <laughs> wow. Man. So That's I'm awesome. sure there's a, I'm sure there's another, I'm sure there's a million like weed Easter eggs in all these Beatles songs, but uh, with a little help from my friends is a fucking awesome song. And I'm going to count that as a weed song. That's in at my number four. Like my, it, like num it. my number three is Weezer hash pipe. Oh shit. Yeah. I didn't, see that. I didn't see that one. That's an obvious one, man. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a win. That's a win. Yeah. Take that's, my dumb Afro man song off of there. That's one of my favorite Weezer songs. That's a good that, song. That and dope knows. I, those are, I mean, hash pipe, hash pipe is my favorite Weezer song. It's just got a cool riff. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Yep. It's good. Um, all right. Weezer in at number three, number two, I'm going to have to explain I don't know. It, it, they've never come up on this on this show before, but I I like the band Clutch. I like it. They're a stoner rock band, and they've got a song called. I mean, the thing about some of these bands is the Dirty Heads. I, th I just assume every song is about smoking pot. You know, yeah. Sublime, Sublime. Every song might mention smoking pot. I don't know. I don't listen to. The, I don't do a lot of lyrics. But Clutch is like a stoner rock band that seems like they'd be Southern, but they're really not. Uh, the song is called Mob Goes Wild, but it's like everybody move to Canada and smoke lots of pop. Clutch is a really, really great band. The, wow. the, 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 uh, well, me singing it ruined it for you. It's over. Yeah, I'm done. Um, they do that song, bang, 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 bang. Vominos, Vominos. It was used in, uh, I think their stuff's been used in a lot of video games before. And they were kind of in with the jackass guys. As a matter of fact, the song that I'm talking about, Clutch, Mob Goes Wild, where they definitely def definitely reference smoking pot in that song. Bam Margera made the video. And Ryan Dunn, he's the guy that passed away. Right. He's in the video. So I had to go revisit that today. So Clutch is in at number two. They really are a pot rock band and then number one is sweet leaf sabbath that this number one i mean there there's no go. question and i was not afro man because i got high hate it bob yeah, dylan yeah. hate him <laughs> sorry i just can't get into it he doesn't speak to me i'm sorry he does not speak to my generation okay at all so i did not know that the song was called rainy day women with a couple of numbers afterwards yeah, 12 and 24. It's like a bike lock combo or some shit. I don't know. I had no idea. Um, I, I thought maybe you would try to shoehorn Doors Light My Fire, Girl We Couldn't Get Much Higher. That was such a famous lyric that they weren't supposed to sing right. on the Ed Sullivan show. And again, this is just a silly topic. I think I would have given it to you. I would have given you that on the list. The Joker. Right, the Steve Miller band. Smoker, I'm a joker. Yeah. I'm a smoker. I'm a toker. Oh, right, or I don't smoker. don't like that band. Yeah, I couldn't put that on there. Uh, it's better than Afro Man because I got high. Yeah, I that is that is a good weed smoking song, Afro Man because I got high. I like it. I had Sublime, and then again, Tom Petty was another guy that was just such a, a pot smoking guy. I don't know if that song Mary Jane is about pot. I just Mary don't Jane's really, last dance. Mary Jane's last dance. I just don't particularly like the song, but I do know for sure he talks about rolling another joint because they were, they were trying to censor it back in the day. Um, you don't know how it feels. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So let's, like uh, so let's roll another joint. Yep. You don't know how it feels. Right. I, he was such a pothead. Again, I assume there's probably 50 Tom Petty songs that have – hot Easter eggs in them, um, kind of like the Beatles. I mean, Petty was – I'm glad I saw him. I'll say that, man. I've, I've said it before. At Jazz Fest, seeing him play, him coming out there, high as a fucking kite, Just it was awesome. High Just, and slow. And he was as high as anybody could be, you know, and he was great. And then I, I want to say he died later that year, right? It was a few months later, yeah, because remember it was pouring out, and, and they were thinking of canceling Jazz Fest that day. 
and they closed it. They wouldn't let anybody in until like three o'clock. We're all sitting around and we're all like kind of hanging out going, ah, it's three o'clock. Who the fuck wants to go wander around all the mud and bullshit? We had tickets already. And then uh, I think my wife's like, nah, fuck this. It's Tom Petty. Let's go. And we're all kind of like, I was never super Petty fan, but like seeing him live before, I was like, I like Tom Petty. So let's go. And we went out there and there's not that many people to see Tom freaking Petty. We're up front, man. And we're just like, and he put well, on one of the greatest shows. It, because when it gets rainy out there, it's super oh, sloppy. You have to wear your like rain boots and you're going to be just coated in mud. You can't sit down. You can't put a chair into the, it's water, it's water, it's mud. It's, it's nope. completely trashed. So my situation was, I was surprised. And again, this isn't just all girls because your wife said, Hey, let's get her off our asses and go down there. Mm -hmm. I kind of felt like I really had to talk my then wife into it because it was so shitty outside. Oh, yeah. And, and I remember calling our friend Whitey and I said, okay, April's in, get off your ass. You got to meet us down there. I think I, I, I texted her. I said, get off your ass. I said, it's jazz fest. We're going, it's Tom Petty. And that's one of the rare instances where I did take advantage of them. You did the same, took advantage of him being there. None of us had seen him before. And then he had passed away. And we immediately, on the day he passed away, you know, it's zinging around going, oh my God, I'm so glad we went that day. Yeah. And I remember Whitey uh, sending me a text. Thank you so much <laughs> for, for, for working so hard to get me out of the house. Right. Number one to go down there. And, you know, it's just, it's just, it was a miserable day, but it had stopped raining and you're going out to an area that's just a fucking mud bog. And we had a great, we had a great day. You're right. We didn't have to deal with lines or it anything spectacular, but he, but he passed away. And it's one of my, it's one of my favorite jazz fest moments of all time. And you know, it's, it's, it's a shame that he had passed away, but how many times has uh, somebody passed away and it's real easy to do with rock stars and you say, ah, you know, I, ah, man, I had, I had all those opportunities to see him and I just never went. And now it's too late. I'm pissed off. Damn. My friends went and I just said, nah, I'm oh. going to stay here. That type of thing. It, 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 it only really stung me in the ass. One other time, uh, my sister and I, both of us were huge typo negative fans and uh, Pete Steele. Uh, the singer, a real big hulking bass player. Yeah, and good, yeah. yeah. And we were going to go see him and she liked him too. And it was Memorial day weekend and we had already been drinking. I said, man, this was pre Uber. I was going to have to call it uh, a limo. I said, let's just get a limo and let's just go and go see the band. Cause they didn't, they didn't, I, I didn't have an opportunity to see them very often. Um, and I, we didn't go. We were like, ah, we're already outside in the pool, that type of thing. We're already been drinking. Let's just do it. And then he, like six months later, he passed away. Same thing. Sue and I are on the phone. We're like, fuck, we're idiots, man. Because he was the singer, too. Right. I mean, you can't replace that. Yeah. And he, yeah, not his voice, not his voice. And they did not go on any further without him. Uh, and I, and I missed out on him. But you know, just doing the, the, you know, these awful days where you're announcing a rock star dies and, you know, how many people told me that they just never got a chance to see Chris Cornell or never saw Chester or, or Scott Weiland or whatever. And go see the bands, man. Go, go see, see the, bands. the bands. It's funny. It's funny. Cause we're, you know, right now, cause you, as you leave a jazz fest, there's, there's, you know, there's hundreds of acts playing. There's multiple stages every day. So you got to plot out where you're going to go, who you're going to see. Right. <clears throat> So my wife is going to go see Lizzo on the first Friday night. She's super excited. So my son and I are sitting there going, I'm not sitting through that. And he's like, I'm not sitting through that. <laughs> so we're like, where are we going to go? So we busted out the cubes, right? And we're looking at the schedule. And Robert Plant and Alison Krauss are playing opposite Lizzo on a different stage. I mm -hmm. said, well, this is an obvious choice, dude. He's like, why? I go, it's the golden God. I go, you've never seen Robert Plant. And this is not Robert Plant in his prime or singing a bunch of Zeppelin tunes. He'll, he'll do one or two. I said, but it's fucking Robert Plant. And when you go see him, you're going to realize why he's Robert Plant. Cause he's still the charismatic God that he's always yeah. been. He's fucking just got whatever it is. He's got it still. I said, dude, that's where we're going to go.
And it's, and it's again, I always think of that nowadays. And anytime I'm choosing acts, I'm like, well, that fucker's pretty old. We're going to go check him out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And you 100%. have to. You got to do it. Take the time. Get, get it done. All right, Rod, that's enough for this horse shit. Any final thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, just the, the thing that we just talked about going to see the bands, I, I probably should have saved that for a final thought, but yeah, just to reiterate what we just said, man, the problem is you never think that you're going to a show that you're going to talk about for the rest of your life. Right. But you have to go to it first and then chances are it doesn't become something that you talk about for the rest of your life, but it could. And here we are. I did not. I, Tom Petty was never my favorite guy either. Um, I brag to people about that Tom Petty story. Oh yeah. You know, I, I really do. I, I, I brag about it. I'm like, yeah, I saw Petty and here's how it happened. And man, I almost didn't go. And, uh, you know, it's different when you go see these baby bands, but think about this though, the young bands and the, the smaller bands that come, come along and play the clubs and stuff. You don't know who's going to be fucking Nirvana. Cause they're playing a club next door neighbor over here, fucking Australia. He saw him in a club. He's like, yeah, they sucked. He goes, it's super unmemorable, but he has that on me. Right. My neighbor has that on me that he wow. saw Nirvana in a fucking club opening up. He had no interest in the opening band, but he knows he was there. He remembers them. And because probably they've talked about it so much afterwards because they got huge right after that. Right. Um, but he saw them. It was just another night that he was out. And Jeez. the band that opened was Nirvana. <clears throat> so he we was out. He went to the club that night to go see the band. And he, I, I can't remember who the band was, but they're nothing. They were absolutely nothing that were headlining. Right, right. Well, how many times have we been? Australian band. We've been lucky enough through the years of like you get these bands to come in, you start playing their one song, and then we see them at like the Holland Wolf, and next thing you know, they're playing the arena. You know what I mean? Like a few years later, that is such a cool thing to see. Have it's rare, it doesn't always happen. It's pretty, pretty rare to get that. You know what the fuck, man? Uh, Matchbox Twenty when they first came to town, I think they're playing some bar, and then of course they were playing you know the bigger places a, a year and a half later, and we saw that happen. We saw them grow. We saw so many bands do that over the years, and that's what's fun about going to see music. And nobody yep. knew that, you know, it wasn't just a suit. It's hard to think that, well, of course, the drummer of Nirvana's band was going to be huge. Oh, no. No. Nobody oh, no, knew that. no, 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 no. Don't think like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. It wasn't was like that at all. And I mean, there was hype about it, but it still, it wasn't, there's no guarantee. It was the drummer from Nirvana. Yeah, who gives and a shit? And he's now singing and, and trying to be a front man of a band. There was no guarantee. So the first couple of times they came through, they played one of our festivals in the day. They didn't yeah, headline. Early. They played the House of Blues mm -hmm. in New Orleans. They played the House of Blues, and that's a 900-seat venue. So then they, then they moved. They graduated to the Howlin' Wolf. And that's maybe 1,100 seats, you know, or packed in there like sardines maybe. Right. But, you know, that's another reason why I love that band because we've been there through every single stage of their career up on through going to play his, you know, in stadiums. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's fun to see that. It's, it's weird. Um, but again, you know what? That's why you got to take the chance. You got to go, you know, hey, you're tired? Get your ass off the couch and go to the show. If you bought the ticket or you got someone who gets you a ticket, go see the band. You don't know, you know? You don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Was it last week's podcast that you were bitching that you had to go see some bands after we were done recording? Yeah. No, it was a couple weeks ago. But yeah, yeah, I had to go do that because – I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fuck. It, it's a Wednesday night, dude. I'm, I go to bed, <laughs> but I did. I went and saw the bands and the bands were decent and they were good and they were fun and it was okay. And I dug it and, and it was fine. I, I watched three songs from each. And I fucking went home. All good. That was enough for me. You know, any I, names that we would have heard anything? Not really. No, they're no. not gonna, you know, there's, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. They're small bands. Uh, you know what? In two years when they're huge, I'll say I was there when 
<laughs> I'll brag all about it then. But for now, right. uh, I didn't do that. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Any, so. uh, any final thoughts, Jason? No, no. Just go see the bands. Do the things. Do the things. Don't be a couch potato. G- g- scrolling through Facebook and falling asleep eating your Cheetos isn't doing things. It's just not. Get up off your ass and get out and do some shit when you can. You know what I mean? I get it. It's expensive these days. But pick your battles and get your ass out there. You know? All right. Well, thanks for checking us out. Be careful with the weed. Um, If you are listening to this podcast, you know, you can watch us on our YouTube channel at play pants pod. That's all the socials as well. Um, Wherever you get your podcast. I know I put it up on the iHeart platform, but we have it. What else do you, I mean, Spotify, Spotify, everything, Apple it's on, it's on, I mean, dude, it's on more shit that I can even shake a stick. You can find it just about anywhere at this point. All right, Literally good. Anywhere. So that's it, man. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you guys checking it out. And again, uh, for sure, 420. Let's go. It's up. Put on Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. See us on our YouTube channel. And follow our social media pages at Play Pants Pod.